again, we're not covering that in this video, but Hello future people, Jason the Bruce here with Getting Tabled and thank you for joining me for another Getting Tabled guide. Today I'm going to be discussing what should be a very simple topic but for whatever reason always seems to turn into controversy for reasons that we'll get into later. Honestly, all we're discussing today is airbrushes. Now. For those of you that are anti-airbrush, for whatever reason, and for those that are new to the hobby, I will explain what those reasons are for you guys in a moment. But for you guys that are anti-airbrush, for whatever reason, all I would suggest is to listen to the first part of the discussion, and if you still feel that airbrushes are not for you, for whatever reason, that's fine. When it comes to airbrushes, why is it that certain parts of the hobby are extremely negative about them. Th there's a few potential reasons. The first one is that there are some people that think that an airbrush is cheating for whatever reason because it makes certain things easier than they should be or, or so on and so forth. Uh, personally, I think that's a very shallow-minded way to think of what is essentially just a tool um because that's that that's all an airbrush is it's just a tool an airbrush once you're used to it can make certain aspects of the hobby a lot easier another reason that um people become anti-airbrush is because of the difficulties of cleaning them um I'm not going to sugarcoat it, there's definitely a lot of cleaning involved with an airbrush, um, but generally speaking, a lot of the bigger problems when it comes to cleaning airbrushes, and I have not had small problems, I have had big problems too, uh, but most of the larger cleaning problems that people come across tend to be because they're not being maintained properly. and. The third reason people may not like airbrushes is they may be in a situation in a house where they just don't have the space or the ability to have an airbrush set up. Uh, and unfortunately, if, the, if that's the case of where you live, that, that's not really something that you can get around. So, for those of you that I haven't scared off, what are some of the benefits of airbrushes? First and foremost, when it comes to things like priming, there can be a massive advantage. Generally speaking, not always, but there are parts of the community that struggle with rattle cans. You're looking to get an airbrush and you're not certain what you're looking at. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to talk about some of the general stuff that you can buy, some of the brands that you can look at and generally get recommended. Uh, one of them will be the brand that I use. Um, but that doesn't mean that it has to be the one that you want. Keep in mind that I have not personally used everything here that I'm going to be talking about today. So I can only give opinions uh, on the products that I've owned. But I'll try, I'll try and give you some good advice as opposed to just my opinion. Kind of similar to how I did with the um, brush video that I did. Okay, so this particular option that we're looking at down here is an Australian brand. Uh, it's something that is made elsewhere and rebranded. I can't tell you who makes it, but this is one of your more budget options. I'm gonna use this initially to talk about what I recommend and what you'll find after watching several videos is the advice I give you is fairly common. The first thing you wanna look for in an airbrush is a dual action airbrush. What that means is when it comes to the trigger at the top here, you push down on that and it starts spraying air and then when you pull back, it begins to spray paint. The reason that 
that is the way that it tends to be, get recommended is because the dual action ones are much easier to control, especially as for someone that is new. It doesn't mean it doesn't take time to learn, but it's still a learning process that you will have to go through. It's a completely different skill to brush painting. Um, in saying that, the skills that are involved are not so hard that it will take you months before you can get some results out of it. There are some things that you'll be able to get your hand around your head around pretty quickly. Now, this particular airbrush, there's different versions of this style of airbrush that you will find in different places. This is just an Australian one, that is an Australian price. Uh, Modifix are a part of the Combat Company, or sorry, the Combat Company is part of Modifix. Um, this is a source. There will be different products that I recommend today. I, I do actually recommend this. I have used this personally. Uh, my housemate still uses his version of this to this day. I think he's had it for three years now. Um, I have a friend that I recommended this to for that exact reason. He's still using it now. Uh, this is just genuinely good quality. Another cheaper source of airbrushes that you could look at is Green Stuff World. Uh, they don't actually talk about their airbrushes very often, honestly, but they do actually have a cheaper airbrush. Um, you'll notice here that they're talking about a 0.5mm, 0.3mm, and a 0.2mm in the airbrush. That's the size of the pin that goes through the whole thing. Going back to the other one that I was talking about a minute ago, you actually will find that this is the same way, but this actually comes with all three of them. Um, it comes with the three mil, so the 0.3 inside already, and then you've got the other two separately. Uh, and then you've got different tips that you have to use depending on which one you've got inserted. Uh, you'll notice with this that it looks very, very similar. Um, I'm just gonna pick the green one for now because I like the color green. Looking at the kit, you will find that it kind of looks very similar. This is the same wrench thing here, which is to help undo certain parts. That's just a pipette. It's just like the cheaper pipettes that you buy everywhere. Similar price point again, so make of that what you will. You will find there are some cheaper ones that you can find on eBay and Amazon. Before you buy any of those cheaper ones, make sure that you read the reviews of the seller. If you can find someone that has reviews of the product that's been rated well, you should be fine. But don't just go and buy willy nilly on somewhere like Air, someone like on eBay or Amazon without checking reviews first. Let's move into some established brands. Now, this is Badger. Badger is the brand of airbrush that I use personally. The Patriot 105 is essentially a walk workhorse. You can definitely get some fine detail out of this. Maybe not as fine detail as some other ones that we'll go into later. Uh, but Badger do have several different kinds of airbrush. I currently have three Badger airbrushes. I have this one. I have the Extreme Patriot 105, which is an updated version of this, um, where it's designed more for the finer details. Uh, and I have the Sotar 2020. Don't buy the Sotar 2020 for your first airbrush. It's not good for a beginner. But that's what you're looking at on the Badger side of things. Next up, we are looking at Iwata, which is another one of the big companies. The thing I like about the Iwata is when you're browsing through, it actually tells you what sort of brushes that you're looking at. So down the bottom here, these are your extra wide ones. These are the sort of airbrushes that you would use on cars and so forth. Just in case the look of them didn't give that away. Um, here you kind of have like your in between. And then you've got kind of an all round. So this will be like the equivalence of your uh, Patriot 105. So in here you will find the Eclipse, which is a very commonly recommended one. The Effortless is a little bit more budget. That's the Neo, which is an another one I've seen 
recommended. The Revolution, I almost brought one of these at one point. And the further I go up here, the more you will find we're moving in towards your more precision detail type airbrushes. Another brand that gets recommended quite frequently. This particular one is a company that sponsor somebody that you will have heard us refer to several times, somebody by the name of Angar Haraldes. I have not used this brand personally, but I know that they have a very good reputation. All different sorts of airbrushes. This one doesn't really it's telling you what sort of nozzle that it has. Uh, but that's kind of the only real detail it goes into there. The Infinity tends to be the one that Ungal Haraldes recommends. This is the one that he uses in all of his videos. Uh, I don't know specifically what tip and pin set he uses. Um, I suspect that he might have more than one. Pash is, well, firstly and foremost, could be not how you pronounce that. I'm saying it's Pash. I could be wrong. Um, this is the brand of airbrush that George has. I don't know specifically which model, but at this point in the video, I'm going to edit in me telling you what that is. Thank you, Pass Me, for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> okay, so the brush that George uses is this one right here. Um, so he has one of the more expensive kits. Uh, he has one that comes with multiple heads and so forth. And it comes with your line and a nice fancy wooden box as opposed to the plastic ones. From the conversation that I had with George last week, he has pretty much nothing negative to say about this airbrush. He's very, very happy with it. Thank you, future me. Okay, so again... You've got some different options here, starting from your very, very simple and basic into getting more and more detail. Generally speaking, the more expensive it is, the more detail focused it tends to be. Okay, so, gravity fed, I prefer. It's easier to maintain, and you can kind of see right through it for blockages and so forth. You put your paint in from the top, and as it's blowing air through, it'll suck through the paint for you as it's going on. These other ones is an airbrush and it has a little pot underneath it. And it's kind of the same thing. It's just that it's sucking it up from down the bottom. There's a little tube that kind of comes into the into this jar here. So that you can, so that it can suck it up and so on and so forth. The benefit of things like these ones is that if you want to custom mix your own colors it's much easier to keep them the colors in here because you can buy lids like in this example here to seal that and then put it on a shelf you could go absolutely crazy if you really wanted to but that's generally the difference between the two uh, you're not going to find differences in detail from one or the other like i said the main benefit of the gravity feed is that because you can see in to the cup and you can see where anything's drying around the pin and so forth it's a lot easier to, cl you to clean because you can see what you're doing whereas with this you can't really see into it you have to kind of just kind of work through it. So if you get a blockage in this tube here, it becomes a lot harder to clean. Not impossible, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Uh, it's just this eliminates one of your problems or potential problems. If you're careful with what you're doing and you start off with the basics, my recommendation would be to start off with things like, get um, if you wanted to buy an airbrush tomorrow, then start off with priming and just priming your minis. When you're feeling comfortable with that, and you move on to Zenithial highlights and doing that from your 45 degrees. Um, if you've already been doing that with a rattle can, then hey, you can all go, probably go straight into both, because that it's a different skill, but it's essentially the same thing. You already know how to get your angles and so forth on that. Um, 
when it comes to things like fine details and trying to paint skins and so forth with them, I would get comfortable with with the results that you're going to get from your airbrush first before you start trying to paint with them. Um, not to say that it's an impossible thing and it's going to take you years of practice, but you want to get used to the basics first before you start trying to go into different colours and so on and so forth. Um, when it comes to changing colours and so forth, every time you change your colour, you want to clean your airbrush. Um, at the end of your session, you want to give it a full clean out, so on and so forth. Just coming back to you at the end of the video now, just with some last couple of comments. Thunderboy, one of the people that help us with the channel quite frequently, has an airbrush as well. He has one of the cheaper ones. It's called Airbrush Fender. My assumption is that it's kind of very similar to the ones that I was showing you at the beginning of the video. So one of your budget ones, except he got his locally. Um, so there you go. You've now got three options of ones that we have used personally. We here at Getting Tabled would like to thank all of you for continuing to support our content. Whether that be through simple actions such as liking and subscribing or sharing our content with other people that you think would enjoy it or to something larger like supporting us on Patreon. Uh, we have a Patreon which is only $2 a month. That gives you early access to roughly 80% of the videos that go live on our YouTube and early access to every video edition of the podcast we release. If you're new to our channel and you'd like to find us on other services, then the best place to start would be Facebook. Facebook is where all of our content is shared first. Uh, it's where you will find us the most active when social media is concerned. And it has links to everything else that I'm about to talk about. You can, of course, get in touch with us via email. Uh, if you have questions about the hobby, our place in the hobby, or even if you've got questions about the content that we've been featuring, then please feel free to reach out. If you have a question that's appropriate, it's possible it might even be answered live during one of our podcasts. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram, both at Getting Tabled. Instagram is a service that we've only joined very recently. Uh, neither of these services are as active as our Facebook page. But we are using them, and we are trying to use them more at all times. Again, our team really wants to thank everybody for supporting us. Uh, it's very much appreciated. And until the next time we see you...